Given the second order linear homogeneous differential equation, x times y double prime plus y prime equals zero, we're asked to determine the general solution on the open interval from zero to infinity. In previous problems, when using the method of reduction of order, we were always given one solution or y1 of x, and then we determined a second solution so that we could find the general solution. In this case, notice how we're not given a solution, but analyzing the differential equation, notice if we let y equal any constant, the differential equation would be satisfied because y prime and y double prime would both be zero. However, we can scoop over that step because there's no y term and perform a substitution to form a first order differential equation. We can let w equal y prime and w prime equal y double prime. Performing substitution gives us x times w prime plus w equals zero, which we can solve using separation of variables. Once we solve for w, we can come back and find y by integrating w because w equals y prime. Let's first write w prime as dw dx, which gives us x times dw dx. Let's also subtract w on both sides, which gives us equals negative w. And now let's multiply both sides by one over x and multiply both sides by one over w. This gives us one over w dw dx equals negative one over x. And now we can think of multiplying both sides by dx, which gives us one divided by w dw equals negative one divided by x dx. And now we integrate both sides of the equation. Because we're solving over the closed interval from zero to infinity, we can leave off the absolute value, giving us natural log w equals negative natural log x plus a constant, which we'll call c sub one. And now we need to work on solving for w. Let's first apply the power property of logs on the right, where because the coefficient of natural log x is negative one, we can move negative one to the position of the exponent on x, which gives us natural log w equals natural log of the quantity x minus one plus c sub one. And now we exponentiate both sides of the equation with the base of e. Simplifying, we now have w equals on the right. We have e to the power of natural log of x to the power of negative one times e to the power of c sub one, which is just some constant. Simplifying again, we have w equals x to the power of negative one times, let's call e to the power of c sub one, c sub two, giving us w equals c sub two times x to the power of negative one. So now that we have w, and we know w is equal to y prime, we can integrate c sub two x to the power of negative one with respect to x to determine the general solution y. This gives us y, or y of x if we want, is equal to the integral of c sub two x to the power of negative one dx. If we want y of x equals the integral of c sub two times one divided by x dx. And therefore the general solution is c sub two natural log x plus c sub three. So while we do have the general solution, I do want to point out, as we said at the beginning, one solution that we could have found was y1 equals any constant, which could be c sub three. And then if we used the full technique of reduction of order, we could have found a second solution y2 is equal to natural log x. And because these two functions are linearly independent, we know the general solution would be the linear combination of these two functions, which is the general solution that we found. I hope you found this helpful.